Okay, my brethren, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would lead us, teach us, and guide us in all truth and understanding. And I come to you today, and there might be some background noise as I'm doing laundry and I'm upstairs, um, to talk to you about preparedness, okay? And I pray that each and every one of you would seek the Holy Spirit of God and ask the Holy Spirit of God how you should each prepare for what is coming upon the earth, okay? Don't uh, have a spirit of fear, but have a sound mind in Jesus Christ's most holy, holy name, okay? Um, first and foremost, I prepare for the things to come spiritually. You need to ready yourself. Julie Wedby had an article up a long time ago or a, a word that said, prepare your hearts by walking in my ways, being the ways of Jesus. Prepare your hearts by walking in my ways and living in holiness. Prepare your families by warning them that time is no more. Prepare your homes and dwelling places as I have given the resources to you. Be prudent and be wise in what you have, always willing to share all with anyone I send to you. Turn off all your media, your recreational entertainment, and carefully listen for my instructions. Remove yourselves to the best of your abilities from material things, things that only serve to stimulate the senses and only feed the flesh and not the spirit of man. Ask me and I will help you to discern what to walk away from and what to discard. Pray over your families and loved ones, your shelters, your vehicles, your resources, and finances, but also all technology you must use, including your banking transactions and any type of business dealings that are done in your lives. Pray over your electricity, your water sources, your foundational structures and perimeters. Ask for my wall, my holy fire wall, and angelic protection high into the heavens above you and deep into the earth beneath you and far into the outer perimeters of your dwelling places both at home and all places you travel. There is an apostate spirit that has permeated and lulled many into a very relaxed and drug light and intoxicated state, which convinces those whose hearts it tickles that all will be well and no great actions need to be taken. I tell you a great truth. This is a complete lie from the pit of hell and will be destruction to all those who have been and will be ensnared by it. Nothing can be further from the truth at this critical mass point you have entered. My word teaches you to be sober-minded, alert, steadfast, watchful, and vigilant, that the enemy roams the earth, seeking whom he may devour. I have never taught you that you are to be satisfied, comfortable, or content with anything that this world has to offer. But yet the message has been driven into the psyches of man and reinforced to the greatest extent possible in order to lull the masses into this false place of security. My people, I am coming, and I am coming quickly, and there will be a day very, very soon where you will suddenly realize it is too late to choose, and my wrath will alarmingly become your instant reality. It does not have to be this way. I am about to shake the entire earth like never before, and entire nations will be altered permanently. The mountains will crumble, the seas will roar, the earth will split and divide in many areas. And you will know that you are in judgment. Do not take these warnings lightly. To prepare to be without a means to buy food. Prepare to live without your modern comforts of electricity and potable water and sewage systems. Prepare for physical darkness. Another thing I have been led to do is I have a plan with my family so that if some kind of a natural disaster hits us when we are at home, each one of them has jobs to do. If something is to happen into their homes or happen while they're at school, I have taught them to call upon the name of Jesus, to pray to Jesus to save them in their time of need, for he is a very real help in times of trouble. I don't teach my children to have a spirit of fear. I teach them that there is power 
in the name of Jesus Christ and in his blood. I teach them that they can call upon him and he will answer them in their time of need. That the Holy Spirit should lead them, teach them, and guide them, and to listen to that still small voice. We have um, some food preps, and whenever I see a sale, I always buy extra. Um, as far as this uh, coronavirus goes, I have uh, a prayer to bless oil and to bless my home so that uh, no plague or pestilence will come near me nor my home, my dwelling, or my family. And I stand in faith that Jesus Christ will protect me and my family. I have also told my children that where people are sick, make sure that they stay away from them and that they're washing their hands a lot more than they used to. I have faith, family. I know that we are going to be here and that we are going to see some things that we would rather not see. But I know, too, that he has gone before us and has made a way for us. I have faith that the things that we will have to endure, that the things we will have to see, will turn many and prepare many for the harvest. I pray that he leads me each and every day. I pray for more workers in this harvest because there are so many who want to go home, including myself. But I know that our Father has a great harvest to reap. And I know that the workers are few. And so I pray that more would join, that more would decide that it is time to bring the brothers, to help to bring the brothers and sisters home when the time comes. A long time ago, I laid at the feet of Jesus Christ the salvation and safety of my family, of my spouse, and of my children. I did this because I trust in him completely. I heard, a way, I heard a word today from Henry Groover, who has passed away, an older word, about God asking him if he would lay down his, you know, his children and his wife, and if uh, he would do this for them. And uh, it brought me back to my own decisions when I was thinking, what can I do to save my family? And I realized that what I can do to save my family is trust in Jesus, to raise them the way that I've raised them, to let them know that God will answer their prayers, to let them know that he is a very real help in times of trouble, and to stand on their faith, to raise their banner of faith, He has shown me that he has loved them before me, and he has loved them more than me. I have seen him all the times throughout my life when he has been there for me. When my mom, a single woman, raised five children on her own, just having a high school education, she put herself through school to gain a real estate license and she was able to support us all but that left her away from home and we children basically raised and took care of ourselves and there were some dangerous situations that we got into where I was almost abducted twice where our house caught on fire one day when we were cooking and we didn't know whether to put uh, baking soda or baking powder over it. But all of these things he has shown me that he was there. 
He was there for us, and he kept us safe. I know, too, and I trust in him that he'll be there for my family when the time comes. I trust in what he decides. I surrender to his will be done and to his perfect timing because I know that his ways are so much higher than our ways and he works all things out for the good of those who love him and are called into his service. I give glory to God in the highest for he alone is worthy of praise. I trust that if he needed to take me from my family or my family from me or if he needed to do anything that it is part of his plan and I know that one day I will see them again in heaven and that when I do see them in heaven and that we've all made it there together that will be a happy day a joyous day and I know that whatever we have to go through here on earth in order to make it back to home, to heaven, will be have well will have been well worth it. Henry Groover, as I was relating in this story, God showed him the same thing. He showed him all the times that he was there for his children, all the times that he was there for Henry, all the times that something happened. And all they had to do was call on his name. One time when his young son, who was four years old, was following him outside the door, he slammed the door on his finger, and his finger was holding by a thread. And Henry Groover, the Holy Spirit through him was speaking the blood of Jesus. And then he thought, and he says, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus will make this finger whole. And the finger reattached itself. Since it was only attached by a sliver, it became whole again, but there was still blood and everything all over his son's arm. And his son, who was four years old at the time, said to his dad not to worry anymore, not to cry, because Jesus has healed his finger and he had reattached it and put it back together. And that story reminded me of all the times that he has shown me in my life when he had been there for me. And that's why when he came to me and asked me if I trusted in him for my family, if I would lay them down at his feet, if I would give up the burden of making sure that they would be safe, if I would trust in him, I was able to do it. Because I know that he knew them before me. He knitted them into the womb of their mother. He has all their days laid out before them. He knows everything they will encounter, everything that they will come across. And he has provided a way for them to make it back home. He has given them to me charge over them, and they've been my little blessings. Until and for the, all the time he's giving me, I thank him. And I thank him for each day that I have with my children, for each day that I have with my wife. Sometimes we argue, sometimes we fight, sometimes we, we're just like any other couple. But I thank him every day for her. I would not have my three beautiful children if I did not have my wife. And... I trust in the Lord that no matter what comes, no matter what we have to go through, that we will all be reunited together one day in heaven. And I give glory to God in the highest for that. And I give all my burdens over to him, all my worries. I give all my fears over to him. I give it all over to him. I'm not afraid to tell him that I'm scared of something or not and I turn it over to him and he gives me his perfect peace and I thank him for that I pray for each and every one of you right now that you would understand 
that what he is asking us for is for our faith and trust in him. For when we have faith and when we trust in him, he can move in our lives. He can make things happen. He can make those who are on the path of the world turn from their worldly ways and start down his path of righteousness. So just think about all the times he's been there for you in your life. And turn over all your burdens, all your hopes, all your fears, all your dreams, all your worries, all your hopes and desires to him. Give them all over to him. Speak life into your situations. Thank him for all that he does for you. I can tell you lately, I've been having little pains in my left arm and I don't know if it's due to a, uh, you know, maybe I need to go get a checkup or whatever for my heart or my heart valves or whatever it might be. I don't know. I trust in the Lord. I trust in him. For he is Jehovah Rapha, my healer. And I know that whatever may come, he will be there for me. And I give glory to God in the highest. I pray for each and every one of you and your families. I pray for those who cannot pray for themselves. I pray for my neighbors. I pray for my loved ones. And I pray for my relatives. And I pray for my brethren. That the Lord would have mercy on us. That he would wash us clean with the blood of Christ. I pray that he would cover us with his holy fire hedge of protection. Round about us on all sides. Far above us and far below us. I pray he would cover our homes and our vehicles. Our places of work and worship our pets and our provisions, our children, their schools, and their daily activities. I pray he would protect us from all electronics we encounter throughout the day and hide us from our enemies. I pray he would change us from corruptible to incorruptible. I pray that his will be done in his perfect timing. And I thank him for being there for me and my loved ones each and every day. I thank him for all my many blessings that he has given me and all the time he has given me with my loved ones. Remember that each day that you see your loved ones to tell them how much you care about them, that you love them. I know some families don't like to do that. My wife's family is one of them. They meet each other on all the holidays and everything, but it's very rare you hear I love you coming from any one of them or giving a hug or anything. And my family is so much different. We hug each other. We tell each other we love each other. We're happy to see each other. And it just feels so much better doing it that way than not telling each other the way we feel. I give glory to God in the highest for he alone is worthy of praise. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the Aleph, and the Tav. He is the first and the last. Holy, holy, holy is his name. He is the great I am. I thank God for all that I have. I thank God for my family, for my blessings, for my brethren for each and every one of you. And I pray that you make your homes ready and you make your hearts ready. And however he leads you to prepare, that you would listen to him. If you're at the store and you see a sale paper and it says that you can get something for a really good deal, that could be the Holy Spirit nudging you, hey, you know, Let's prepare, let's grab some extra, let's have some extra food in the house. Let's have extra water. If you don't have the resources in order to do that, then during the time when the times come, he will lead you to somebody who has plenty. I give glory to God in the highest, for I know 
that he has a plan for each and every one of us. And I know that the Holy Spirit of God will work in each and one of us until the day of Christ Jesus. I love each and every one of you, and God bless you all. Amen.